Every day for about two hours, the building from which I am speaking to you turns itself into a kind of high rent language school. My colleagues and I will wrestle with English, Spanish, and French. It's always hard, frequently infuriating, and we kind of love it. Hi everyone, welcome back to 40 Billion Reasons. I'm Max Israel. You know, over the last several episodes, we've talked a lot about this concept of flow state and how sometimes making work better starts with making it actually harder. And one of the key concepts in all that was this idea that you've got to create an environment that's got some unique challenges. So I thought this week I'd show you a bit of our own company culture and take you behind the scenes. You see, at Customerville, we do something that's actually pretty unique. We place an incredible focus on learning languages, primarily English, Spanish, and French. I'm going to show you why we do that and also kind of what it looks like in the day-to-day. -day. But before we do, let me just come right out and say something. Um, anytime you do something like commit to pay for everybody to take private language instruction in English, French, or Spanish, you're implicitly saying something very important. What you're saying is, I trust you. I trust you to get the most out of this. I trust you to push yourself to grow uh, personally and professionally. And frankly, I trust you to get your work done. And that idea of trust is something that we've just seen kind of over and over the past few weeks as we've talked about flow state and how you make that happen. Um, in fact, I, I saw in her LinkedIn comments somewhere, Erin Van Remortal at uh, Verizon said something to the effect that the great companies that she sees put that trust in their employees. They trust them to wrestle with problems, to find solutions, but then they kind of build their infrastructure around that, right? As opposed to trying to systematize every single little decision so that their people become kind of robots. So back to our unique culture of languages and how that creates a culture of challenge here. Here's what gave rise to that. Although we're an American company founded 15 years ago in Seattle, our largest office is actually in Valencia, Spain. That's where I am now. I'm speaking to you from Valencia. That's where we have the majority of our developers and designers and support teams, and they work hand in glove with their American counterparts who actually live and work uh, spread all throughout the United States. And so if you think about kind of some of the consequences of being a company divided between the US and Europe, that means that in almost any conversation you can think of, at least some of the participants are communicating in a language other than their native one. And companies do this all the time, especially big companies. And one of the ways that they tackle this is by making sure they're hiring people who all speak a common language. Usually that's English. So we need to be sure that we, uh, that we have that. But also uh, we have people like me who live and work here in Spain. And if you get a, a meeting with 10 Spanish speakers and one English speaker, things can get pretty weird. Those, that, that, that English speaker needs to learn to speak Spanish. Otherwise things just kind of slow down and, and it doesn't really work. So people like me who live here and work here need to speak uh, Spanish. But I want to tell you something else that happened. I just hated the fact that we kept finding these incredible, talented people here in Spain who just had one little problem, which is that they didn't speak English very well. I hated that. So we came up with a, a new approach, which is that we didn't require them to speak English very well. It turns out that what really counts isn't the ability to speak English so much as it's the intense desire to speak English. If you're excellent in your subject area and you're willing to learn English, we'll hire you. Then we'll put you on the treadmill to learn English. And what we discovered is that this actually helps us to select for what's really important, which is people who have an intense desire to learn new stuff and are willing to push past any amount of self-consciousness to do it. And that's how we started teaching languages. We have high quality private language instruction pretty much all the time. Our workday goes until about six or seven uh, in the evening, which is actually pretty typical for Southern Europe. Uh, but from two to four most days, this place turns into a kind of language school. We have classes in English, French, and Spanish led by three extremely dedicated, very highly qualified teachers. 
This has turned out just to be an incredibly cool part of our, our culture. Beyond just delivering a culture of learning, it also does something just incredibly wonderful for us. And it's something we in particular really need. It helps us develop a culture of being challengers. Here's what I mean. You all know Customerville for this concept of design-driven feedback, how, how we blend technology, art, and behavioral science to create kind of a different approach to enterprise feedback management. Many of you have read our, our book on that. We just believe that how you capture and use feedback ought to be a very experiential part of the experience for customers, but also for employees. And, and if you think about it, that actually flies in the face of like 50 years of orthodoxy in our industry. And this is actually something you don't hear people talking about very much. When was the last time you heard anybody uh, talk about this confluence of design thinking and art, much less putting it at the center of everything that they, that they do? So we're actually pretty unique in that way. But listen, I send these guys out every day to compete against companies that have kind of gorged themselves on a half a billion dollars in venture capital money. We're one of the very few organic growth stories in our industry. And if you're gonna do that, if you're gonna be that challenger brand, my friend, you cannot be afraid of anything. And most of all, you can't be afraid to get up and stand for what you believe in even if it makes you feel very self-conscious because you're the only voice in the room advocating for your ideas. If you've ever studied a, a foreign language in your life and then you've gone somewhere and tried to speak that foreign language, you know what that self-consciousness feels like, don't you? It's kind of fear, isn't it? I mean, you really have fear of looking silly, right? Of having people look at you kind of funny. With our language classes, we invite that fear right into our house. We live with it, we eat our meals with it, we make best friends with it. And one of the wonderful things I realized about our language classes was that they just kind of inoculated us against that fear, that self-consciousness, which let me tell you, is a pretty useful thing to have around if you're the challenger brand. Okay guys, I gotta run. I have to go do, of all things, my, my French class now. Uh, at this point in my life, I'm a competent Spanish speaker, so I'm busy struggling my way up the learning curve and kind of making a fool of myself doing it in uh, in French, but that's okay, I'm, I'm used to it. And so we'll see you next week. Next week is gonna be the end of season one. We're gonna have a little recap of the past few months episodes of 40 Billion Reasons. Then we're gonna take a few weeks off and then we'll come back with the next dozen episodes in season two. I'll see you next week, guys. <laughs>